So we as Vaca are trying to get more involved with Best Buddies Special Olympics, the Monon Center. So I figured it would be very easy and beneficial to just kind of bring everybody together. Um, they're going to do a preview of what their organization has to offer and then hopefully give some examples about how to get your kids involved this year. Um, so that's why I wanted to do it as early in the year as possible just so you could have an overview of what to do. So first up is Best Buddies. So you guys can introduce <laughs> Thanks for coming out tonight. I'm uh, excited to be here. I just want to kind of get an idea of what age, um, age your kids are. So we can just teenagers. Teenagers? Nineteen? Eighteen. Eighteen? Twelve and eight. Twelve and eight? Thirteen. Five. Thirteen and fifteen. Thirteen and fifteen? Eight. Eight. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so um, you guys are in a great age group for Best Buddies. Um, I'm Ryan Sullivan. I coordinate our Citizens Program. Um, so hopefully at some point I'll get to hang out with all of your kids. Um, and uh, we're very excited to talk with you tonight about what Best Buddies is. Um, and Eva's going to kick us off with uh, with some of that. Yeah, so my name is Eva Riddick and I am a program manager out of our state office here in Indiana. So I manage all of our college chapters. We have a total of about 20 college chapters here in Indiana alone. So, um, you know, so I'm going to start. All right, so Best Buddies International was founded in 1989 by Anthony Kennedy Shriver, so the son of Ian Shriver, who started Special Olympics. And the first chapter was established at Georgetown University. Um, and since then, we have grown. We're now in all 50 states. We're in 54 countries total. Um, we're impacting you know, thousands of lives um, here in America and around the world with our programs. Uh, <coughs> here at Best Buddies, or excuse me, here in Indiana alone, um, we have 88 chapters. And so we're as far north as Notre Dame and as far south as Evansville, um, USI, and UB. Um, and so we're really making a difference across the lifespan, um, you know, starting from elementary school age children up to you know, adults. Um, so we, uh, let's see, our one-to-one -one friendship program, uh, or excuse me, the mission of Best Buddies is to establish a global volunteer movement that creates opportunities for one-to-one uh, -one friendships, integrated employment, and leadership development for individuals with developmental disabilities. So that, that includes autism, uh, Down syndrome, Fragile X, So these are just some ways that anyone can get involved. So um, as you get to learn more about Best Buddies, get involved with it. You yourself can be involved, family members who maybe want to participate as well. Um, you can block the screen during presentations. <laughs> you can do funny here, you know, and things like that. Um, so you know, naturally advocating as parents, you're going to be the best advocates, the strongest advocates. Uh, but we do host ambassador programs for your children or yourself to help to give them some tools for writing their own speeches, delivering their own speeches, conversational advocacy, um, you know, things of that nature so that they can advocate for themselves and if you'd like to you can improve your advocacy skills as well with them. Uh, we host events throughout the year that you'll be invited to via those wonderful email distribution lists. Um, volunteering at those events or as with every other um, nonprofit will very graciously accept any donation. Um, but most importantly for you is ways that your child can get involved. That's really what you're here for. That's what you want to talk about. Um, the most, uh, like I mentioned, the Ambassadors is really an awesome program. Love it a lot. It's a great opportunity. Not just learn to advocate for yourself, but just to get on a platform to speak. The Ambassadors love to get out there, love to speak. Um, they have national ambassadors, international ambassadors. So you know, through that program, people have had the opportunity to travel and meet all kinds of new people. Uh, one of our local ambassadors, Katie Cortelia, got to stand in for Oprah because Oprah couldn't make it to an event. They called Katie, hey, you got to fill in for Oprah. She doesn't cut it. I'm like, I agree. I didn't like the show. Anyway. She never gave me a car. Um, <laughs> but the majority of our participants are reached through our friendship programs, which Eva touched on and we'll go into. Um, more explicitly to share with you what those are about. Yeah, so with our school friendship program, um, we're at the elementary school level, which our elementary school level program is a pilot program here in Indiana currently. We have one school um, in Nora, so Nora Elementary School has a pilot program. 
Um, and so we're hoping to roll out that um, elementary school program across the state, um, probably like, slowly expanding yeah, slowly and growing. Expanding, so hopefully in you know, the years to come. So our middle school and high school programs um, are our largest programs. Um, and so we match uh, volunteer students um, in those special education um, programs with, excuse me, we match volunteers with students in our special education programs um, in one-on-one -on -one friendships. And so um, they hang out, it's just very organic, um, genuine friendships. Um, and at our college level, we would match a student at the college with a individual from a host site agency. So could, for example, Noble, um, Outside the Box, um, Hillcroft, um, the Arc of Indiana, they are so service providers that provide us with individuals with developmental disabilities match them with the students um, in the colleges in those one-on-one -on -one friendships. Um, and yeah, now we're going to look at a video. This is a video made about Madeline Zach, who um, actually went to, I believe, uh, Hamilton Southeastern, um, right around here, probably, what, like four minutes away, I assume. Um, yeah, they uh, went to high school together and you know, really exemplify what we hope every best buddy's friendship turns into. How's the volume? Four best buddies that could have friends, but they'd always be within the you know special needs classroom. He didn't really have very many genuine friends outside of that. But when he came to high school and he really got actively involved with best buddies, he really started to find genuine friends that he could hang out with. And you know he's obviously formed a really special connection with Ben Fletcher. He did not want to go to high school, but once he got there. I mean, really start getting involved with us, buddy. He and Madeline just connected. I see her normally before school and during lunches, during passing periods, and I sometimes go to her locker. And if she's like having a bad day, like I'll call her or text her to see, you know, if everything's going okay for her. We've been matched all four years in high school. He's my sister, and he's my brother. I think we fight like brother and sister. We get along like brother and sister. We love each other like that. He's got to start family events. Uh, our Fourth of July picnic. He's right there in the picture with all the other cousins. <laughs> and I think everyone knows that Madeline and Zach go together. <laughs> you don't get one without the other. We usually hang out on the weekends. We usually play Wii at her house. We watch movies. He is such a personable guy and wants to talk to everyone. He doesn't judge anyone. Once he wants something, he will not give up. He is the cheer manager, the track manager, basketball manager. He is Best Buddies Buddy Director. He is involved in Riley Dance Marathon. He's in student council. I mean, he just loves being involved in everything. I just, I can't even imagine my high school career without him, to be honest. I mean, I think that I would be a lot less happy. Madeline really kind of has that special quality of that she really wants to invest time in this friendship. She treats him just like she would anyone. You know, she doesn't let him get away with things just because he has autism. She holds him to a high standard, and I see him using those tools outside of when he's with them. It's really neat to look um, back at Madeline and Zach over the years. They have both just grown up so much through the program and as friends. They've been friends since eighth grade and here they are graduating together. It's one of those friendships that I know they'll always have that connection. When Zach won uh, Homecoming King this year, she was hugging Zach. And that look on her face, it was just like a love and a pride that you could just tell she was, she just loves my son. She's been so kind and so sweet to Zach. As a mom of a child with special needs, you're always concerned about whether they're going to be included or whether they're going to fit in and just, just make it in this big, big world. When you have someone that becomes a friend like that, I have seen him grow. This has been above and beyond what I could have ever imagined. Madeline, she is everything to me. She's like a big sister to me. I appreciate that, you know, she's always by my side, rather if I'm having a good day or a bad day. Me and Alan will always be buddies. So, kind of aware 
where are they now? Um, Zach is uh, currently the buddy director at Butler University. So they have a chapter at Butler University. And he just he was a recent recipient of uh, Self Advocate of the Year Award uh, with the ARC of Indiana. Um, and then Madeline is a part of our IE chapter. Um, she's a student down at IE. So they're still heavily involved with Best Buddies. Just really great, just wonderful. I haven't watched that video all the way through in a while, so I forgot how small Zach used to be. Yeah. <laughs> now he's on a friendship walk community, yeah. and he's like this tall, yeah. and he's telling me all what to do and what. Yeah. All right, right on, right on, my dude. Um, and yeah, it is really wonderful, as you're all very aware. It's just a wonderful community to connect into and, and get to meet all those other people. Um, so, Best Buddy Citizens is undeniably the most important program that we offer. Uh, because it's the program that I that I run and facilitate, so <laughs> naturally it's most important. Um, objectively speaking, though, people are typically adults longer than they are children, um, and so as parents, and when I get to talk with parents or participants, like Zenobia mentioned, the big concern is, um, you know, what happens when the parents no longer there and after high school, you know, how to get them plugged in. So. Uh, citizens is so important for that reason, and uh, like Eva mentioned, it's that same model of just one-to-one -one friendship um, and just connecting on that level. Um, you know, I really believe in the power of those personal relationships and uh, making those connections there. But we do, as you can see in the picture, still focus on group events and getting plugged into the community. Uh, that's at our Indians nights, um, you know, just to get get people involved, get them in um, to those. Out, hanging out, doing, doing the regular stuff. Um, so, um, the the soonest and easiest way to, to kind of get a taste. This April we have our friendship walk. Um, like most everybody else, it is um, a fundraiser, but it's also a free event to attend. Um, show up, kind of see what Best Buddies is about. Um, you know, if you'd like to uh, participate in the fundraising efforts. Definitely much appreciated, but you know, at the very least, mark your calendar for Sunday, April 24th. Come down to the canal. Um, I think we're walking like 1.8 miles this year, and then we're what? In the 5K. Yeah, a 5K run. If you're a runner, your kids are runners. Um, come down and do the run with us. Hang out afterwards, and then from there, you know, going forward, looking at. Looking at getting your, your kids involved on the regular day, like we said, the school program. So Fisher's Middle School, we've got a strong chapter. Um, HSE, um, obviously Zach and Madeline met there. Um, still have a really good chapter there. And I love Best Buddies, and I'm not just saying that because you know I work for the organization. Um, I'm really, you know, when I go out to the different chapters and different schools, I'm really seeing our mission in action, and it's really making a difference in the lives of both our volunteers and the children. I just really want to encourage you guys to look into our programs. Um, you can, you'll have both Ryan and our, uh, our contact information. Um, we'll have information for you as well, just more detail about our programs. So, uh, thank you for listening to us and um, being here tonight. We really appreciate it. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, now, what if um, like my son's not in the public school? So okay. How do, how do, would they come to the ARC or would he help? How old is your son? He's um, 18. Gotcha. Yeah, so he would actually qualify for um, our citizen program, or does he receive services? Yeah, he actually um, goes to the Hope Source. I don't know if you to the Hope the Store. Hope Source. Hope Source. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to look into them. So what would probably be the best way for him would be our college programs. Okay. Um, and so we'll just look at the different ways to get him involved um, there, or if that's not an option, our citizens program um, is just community-based, so he wouldn't have to work with any current provider or meet any other criteria. Because okay. you know, we, we actually had done the eBuddies program. Yeah. Um, the only problem was he, he wasn't able to email every week. Mm. So they dropped us. <laughs> so I think we maybe would do better face to face. Yeah, yeah definitely. So. <laughs> we have three um, college chapters here in Indy. Okay. Butler, Marion, and IP. Okay. So whatever is closest to you. And it doesn't matter if he's not going to college. I mean, if he's not no, going to college. No, he doesn't have to be in college. Okay. <laughs> he just has to be affiliated with a whole Site oh, got it. Okay. Or service providers like the ARC or like the Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? I was late, so I may have missed this, but you said it starts in middle school? 
Yes. Yeah. Now, how did you choose that age to start the Best Buddies program rather than elementary? So we do have a elementary school <coughs> program here in Indy, a pilot program. So the elementary school program is new. Um, what day is that? What is that? A year ago? Uh, yeah, I think we kind of yeah. started those conversations about a year ago. Yeah. So at the elementary school level in modern models, what we call a promoters chapter, uh, which really started at schools that don't have a special needs department, special ed department. Um, and so those students work on advocating um, for the disability rights movement and um, kind of getting that presence more in their schools around students who don't have it. And so the elementary school follows that same model rather than parents, students, and the friendship. Um, you know, it's just kind of getting started there. I think ultimately the goal is to take the friendship program down to the elementary school level, but we just want to ensure that it would be a sustainable and successful program. Um, and so starting with the promoters kind of allows us to test the water on that. And the elementary school that we are at, uh, Nora Elementary School, uh, they do have a special education department. And so the children, the volunteers are interacting with those children. They're just not being paired in those one-to-one -one friendships. Um, so it's kind of more like a group you know, activity and events and stuff. So. Do this on their own, or is it typically through your organization? It's through our organization. Uh, and so, so yeah, there's a, there's a balance of autonomy at the local level. Um, you know, we like the schools to, to make as most of the decisions as possible, and we provide a support. Know, fundraising ideas. For example, I know Westfield has it in the elementary school, but it's their own program. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Westfield, yeah. Westfield, Washington schools has it, but it's a, it's their own under their own aegis. They mm -hmm. have they handled it themselves. Okay, but, so they match peers. They do in they the go. elementary yeah. levels. Mm -hmm. Like through, mm -hmm. I, uh, when mm -hmm. Alex was evaluated, they said we have buddy matches in fourth grade, nice, yeah. but they didn't. We didn't talk about middle uh -huh. school, so it may switch over to best buddies at, at the middle school. I don't know. Yeah, that's exciting to see, you know, others picking it up and just putting it into to play on their own. There's okay, yeah. I'd like to know what kind of skills do the participants need to have before they could be a candidate for best buddies? On which side? Uh, individuals with disabilities <laughs> or <laughs> 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 I can't the disability side. Um none in particular. None, yeah. We we yeah. try and do our best to educate our volunteers from like the general student population on um, what disabilities are, how to interact with a uh, child with a disability, how to communicate with them. So we definitely have that you know, prep before we just kind of say, okay, here's your friend, mm -hmm. here's your buddy. So yeah. okay. we make sure that they're informed and they know what to expect. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've got a, my follow-up question. And how do you deal with all the anxious mothers? That <laughs> 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 we eventually invite parents to be involved in the chapter. Um, to get involved with fundraising efforts, uh, chapter events, organizing events. Yeah, you can just really be there with your child um, as they you know, build that friendship. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just whatever's best for the mother and the kid yeah. And, yeah. and the body. Uh, it's, a, it's a process and it looks very different for, for everybody and you are by no means in the minority as an anxious mother. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Other questions? Does anybody else want to make money or something? <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, we do have um, pamphlets for you guys to take home with you for yeah. more information. And we have our business cards as well, so you can get in touch with us. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And Madeline, who is his buddy, works with my son in a special needs gymnastics class that they did at DeVos before she went off to college. And then her younger sister took over her position, and then her cousin runs our tennis program in Carmel. So the whole family is very involved in helping with special Olympics and special needs. So love them dearly. So glad to see them in that video. That was cool. I've never seen that before. Well, now we're going to transition from best buddies into special Olympics. So some more opportunities for you to get your... Uh, special needs individuals out there doing something. I'm going to kind of tag team this with Jay. He is one of our coaches and volunteers. 
and my name is Beth Swigel. I am the Central Regional Manager for Special Olympics of Indiana. I am a mother of a special needs child. Uh, he is going to be 15 next month. It's hard to me believe. He's a freshman in high school already, and he's taller than me. He started out way down here. Uh, when we started Special Olympics, he was really tiny and really shy. Um, I also have brothers and sisters who have special needs, but it wasn't really until I became a parent that you kind of get that urgent feeling that, ooh, I really need to get involved in this and find out what's going on. So ever since then, I have been working in the special needs community now for a little over 12 years. Um, and I really like what I do with Special Olympics. I work with over 25 different counties across central Indiana. So I get to travel a lot and work hand on hand, one on one with a lot of our families and uh, Special Olympic athletes. So it's really a lot of fun. This is my son, Nicholas. He is why I do what I do. Um, we have a lot of fun together. Jay got to work with him uh, this past <laughs> fall for uh, flag football. Nicholas is kind of in the skills level, what we call it. He can't really play on a team, um, but he's gotten pretty good at throwing, catching, running little routes, things like that. So he has come a long way from when we first started. A little bit about Special Olympics. We, are, uh, we offer more than 20 different Olympic type sports. Um, here in Indiana, those are competition sports. Not every county offers that. If you live here in Hamilton County, you're very fortunate that Hamilton County offers more than 20 different sports. Um, wide variety of opportunities all year round for you to stay busy and to get involved. Um, it's typically for children eight years old and older. Um, there is no age limit. Our oldest athlete this summer that participated in summer games was 91. Mm -hmm. So as long as they're wanting to stay active and keep going, we've got something for them. The eight years old age limit uh, is basically for our competition. We do have a young athletes program that Michelle might touch on later, uh, that is for our two to seven year olds. Uh, and we've actually just started a partnership with uh, five pilot programs in school systems across the state of a new program called our Young Champions Program, uh, which is to complement the program that we have at the high school level called our Champions Together program. That is a partnership with the IHSAA, the Indiana High School Athletic Association, where our athletes partner with their typical peers and participate in unified sports. So we are now expanding that down to the elementary and middle school level as well. Uh, Special Olympics is typically for individuals with intellectual disabilities or who have some other type of situation where this is going to benefit them. So emotional disorders, behavior disorders, speech disorders, anything like that, that they're kind of got those limited abilities, then we're going to allow them to participate. We pretty much don't say no to anybody, and we don't determine eligibility. So if you fill out the application, your doctor, therapist, or whoever says, you know, you're gonna, your child's going to benefit from this, then they become an athlete. Anybody else can be a volunteer, a coach, or a unified partner. We have over 11,000 athletes in Indiana uh, and continuing to grow. There is no charge to participate in Special Olympics, which is really nice because I'm sure you guys know, as I do as a special needs parent, it is really expensive to raise a special needs child. You may not know the statistics, but it typically costs eight to ten times more to raise a special needs child than a typical child. And that's just through the age of 18 because most 18-year-olds are going to have a job, move out on their own, go to college, that kind of thing. Mom and dad don't always have to be responsible for them anymore. That's not the case with a special needs child. With a special needs child, they may end up living with you for the rest of your life. And even if they do get into some sort of assisted living, mom and dad are still sometimes responsible. So that cost of taking care of that individual is very expensive. So it is really nice, and I am very appreciative as a parent, that Special Olympics is not a part of that burden. Uh, we are non-for-profit, non uh, and things do cost money. So even though we don't charge <coughs> the athletes to participate, we still have to pay for things. So we're constantly doing fundraisers, relying on donations, grants, uh, and things like that uh, to come up with those funds to cover those expenses. The mission of Special Olympics is pretty much what you think it might be. We offer year-round sports opportunities and athletic competitions to individuals with intellectual disabilities, children and adults, no matter what age. Uh, we basically want to help them develop their physical fitness, uh, demonstrate their courage, and have that pride and joy that we all know that you get when you 
win the game or you win the race or you're able to do something you never, never were able to do before. Um, and these are some more of our Hamilton County athletes that are pictured up here. This was from our softball competition. Um, Andrew here in the black shirt is actually one of our uh, recent high school graduates that lives here in Hamilton County. Our vision for our athletes is to empower individuals with intellectual disabilities to realize their full potential. Um, I don't know about you guys, but when my son was diagnosed 12 plus years ago, I got a lot of what he could not do and what he wasn't probably going to be able to do, and it was kind of depressing. So we in Special Olympics, and I personally believe that our kids can do anything. They can do the same thing as anybody else. It just may need to be modified and changed up a little bit, but we can still offer them the same opportunities. And so that's what Special Olympics believes in as well. These guys can participate in sports opportunities and anything else just like any other kid. And as we continue to work with the school systems, they will be participating in those sports with their own schools. The athlete's goal is for all persons with intellectual, uh, in, intellectual disabilities to have the chance to become useful and productive citizens in their community. So we work with these athletes not just in sports at the school system or at their age level, but as they grow to become adults, we have what we call our athlete leadership program where we train them to become leaders in the community board members, coaches, uh, volunteers, anything that they're able to do with their ability level uh, to go out and represent intellectual disabilities in their community and show people what they're able to do. Not what they can't do, but what they can do. We always emphasize on the positive. A um, little bit of history about Special Olympics. Uh, it was founded in 1969 um, here in Indiana, which was just a year after it was founded nationally in 1968. Uh, we offer a wide variety of opportunities for individuals of all ages. Um, there are more than 50 affiliates in North America. We have 250 countries that we are in with over 3 million athletes worldwide. I don't know if any of you got to see on ESPN this past summer the World Summer Games. It was very emotional. I cried every night when I watched it. Uh, and we actually had several of our Indiana athletes that got to go out and participate. Uh, one of our adult individuals uh, is in the, um, I think it's the Army Reserve, uh, and they asked him to come out to represent. We thought, well, maybe he'll just get to march in with the flag or something, but he actually got to speak during opening ceremonies and have a little interview on TV, so we were very impressed about that. Uh, let's see. We have a little over 11,000 athletes and 10,000 volunteers. We need almost as many volunteers as we do athletes to make our programs run. Everything on the county level is totally run by volunteers. Uh, so we rely on our volunteers and our coaches uh, to make everything work for our athletes. Uh, and we try to have as much of a one-on-one -on -one as possible that we need to based on everybody's ability levels or behaviors, things like that. Um, but it's definitely never less than a four-on-one. Special Olympics Incorporated is based out of Washington, D.C. They oversee everything worldwide. Um, they do have different branches throughout the world, and we are underneath the North America branch. The state of Indiana oversees all programs that are run here in Indiana, so at the area and county level. Our areas take care of some of our programs uh, and uh, competitions that are done at the area level, and then our county programs are the ones that train our athletes and teach them how to play the different sports and things like that. Uh, we do offer over 20 different sports and competition. Um, not all of our counties are able to offer these, as I mentioned before. Um, it just kind of depends on what's available in your, your county. We've got some counties who don't have access to a swimming pool, so they obviously can't do aquatics. Um, we have some counties that don't have a bowling facility in their county, so they can't offer bowling. But as I said, here in um, Hamilton County, we pretty much offer all of these. The only ones they don't participate a whole lot in are the winter sports, snowshoeing, snowboarding, and alpine skiing. Uh, in addition to these, they have things like disc golf that they offer, and cheerleading, and things like that. So a little variety of all kinds of stuff. Just because it's not on there doesn't mean that the county program can't offer it. Uh, we actually just had Garen High School approach Hamilton County about doing lacrosse. Lacrosse is not a, a competition sport for us. The IHSA doesn't even recognize it at the high school level. But that doesn't mean our athletes can't participate in it. We just don't have a competition for it yet. You never know. 
We also offer different skills levels. That's kind of how we operate, is when we pair people up on any questions about Special Olympics or anything that we have to offer. Yes, right here in front. She has, my daughter has no, like, motivation. So I don't know what she would be interested in or anything. So is that where you do the skills thing? That could be. How old is she? She's 19. She's 19. Well, teenagers often don't have motivation to do much, <laughs> so that's kind of typical. Um, it might be just a matter of getting her out and making friends and finding out, you know, where she fits in. You know, whether she likes bowling or she likes to walk. Um, in our track and field competitions, we do have a walking competition. Um, did she go to one of the local schools here? Uh, until sophomore year. Okay, so th there might still be some people that she might know that she, you know, or she could make some new friends. Uh, it would just be a matter of kind of trial and error. One of the nice things about Special Olympics, since there's no fee involved, there's no real commitment involved, you can kind of try it. If it doesn't work, try something else. We've got over 20 different sports, so you can just try them all until you find the one that's the right fit. So when you call, what do you say? Uh, do you live here in Hamilton County? Yeah, Marion. Marion County is a little tricky. Um, because there's a, a northeast, an east, a south, a west, and uh, Washington Township. I'm assuming I'm 50 <laughs> so, um, if you go on the Special Olympics website, uh, which is hard to see there, it's soindiana.org, we have a list of all the different county programs. So, you can contact that county program, mm -hmm. tell them that you're interested in getting started, and they can walk you through the steps, let you know what they currently have going on, what's coming up. Uh, there is an application that you fill out uh, just for medical reasons and things like that so we can make sure that all the safety things are put in place. And you can always contact me if you can't find the right person and then I can help you out. Next question. How do you get started in a sport? So you would go to the website, you look for your county, mm -hmm. you select a sport, then you contact somebody and you don't necessarily have to select the sport right off the bat. Um, you would, you could contact that county, and usually, if that county program has their own individual website, which uh, Hamilton County does, then you go to their website, and there's a list on there that shows you all the different sports and activities they offer. Then you can contact the county coordinator or the sports coordinator and say, "I'm interested in, you know, learning more about your program, or I'm interested in this sport," and they can tell you all about it. Do they have cutoff dates for signing up for a sport or? Yes, they do, because our sports run seasonal, kind of like the school system. So we've got spring, summer, fall, and winter sports. So there's a registration period, and then there's kind of like a two week for those late people that miss the cutoff. <laughs> and then once, once the paperwork's turned into the state office for competition, then they can't take any more. Um, but that doesn't mean you still can't participate in something and then co compete next time. Any other questions? Yes. The uh, criteria of eligibility for our kids, um, you mentioned about the intellectual disability. What about if the, uh, the child you know, has, has um, average IQ, but you know, there is no social difficulty? Right. You know? That's fine. Because they didn't really say it here on the slide. I don't know if it says it here in the brochure. But it's intellectual disability or, and that or is the big Thing. Let me see if it says it here. Or significant learning or vocational problems due to a cognitive delay that may require or have required special designed instruction. So if they've got some sort of um, special need that requires them, if they've got an IEP, they automatically qualify is basically what it boils down to. Uh, and like I said, Special Olympics doesn't determine eligibility, so if you've got a doctor or a therapist or uh, somebody at your school that's going to sign that form and say, yes, this child's going to benefit from this opportunity, then they're automatically in. Like uh, my child, you know, I took him to soccer uh, program at YMCA, and uh, I couldn't meet the, the typical kids, and what I, I noticed that, you know, he's not really know how to play with you. Right. Even though he's really athletic. Very yes, fun. and that, that's one of the things that we will do. They don't have to know how to play the sport to participate. That's what our coaches and volunteers are for. They will teach them the sport uh, and then work them up to where they can participate on the team and compete. Um, so there's a level for everybody. They don't have to know how to play soccer or flag football, basketball, softball. We teach them those skills. I think you had a question. So for young athletes, mm -hmm. what a five-year-old, so Hamilton County, 
Is there information on the website? Are there programs in yes. Hamilton County? Uh, Hamilton County is a nice exception. They've got two currently young athletes programs. Michelle has one at the Monon Center that I'm sure she's going to mention here in a few minutes. Uh, and then when her program is not going on, there is an additional one going on at White River Church in Noblesville run by Brooke Garcia uh, in their special needs program up there. In addition to that, we just started a partnership with Noblesville School Systems to offer our Young Champions program in the schools. Um, so in Hamilton County, there's lots of opportunities for the younger age groups. How do we learn more about Young Champions? Uh, within the schools, mm -hmm. um, that we just had the training today for the school <laughs> system, so it is brand, brand new. We've got five school systems that we're doing a pilot program with uh, through the end of this school year then they're going to help us kind of tweak things and make it better for the, hopefully we can get it going all year round next year. So I would just kind of keep your eyes and ears open. If you're in the special ed program at your school, then more than likely you're going to hear something about it. Any other questions? Oh, our son is nonverbal and he doesn't always understand instruction. So I guess, you know, if he can't understand the you know, it takes him a lot longer to process a direction and sometimes he doesn't process it so I guess you know how understanding are the coaches how are how able are they to handle nonverbal children oh sure most of our coaches are, are very experienced with handling special needs uh, we've actually had some individuals who have had autism and deaf at the same time uh, so they've obviously that person brought an interpreter because they did sign language <laughs> Uh, you as a parent are always more than welcome to help intervene as far as communication and making sure your child understands instructions and stuff. Um, do they use pictures and things like that? Or <laughs> it, While he's here, he does, but when he gets home, he's like, I'm done using that yes. talker. Yeah. So Sometimes he, he it just might gets just to be a limit where he just doesn't want to use it. How old is he? Eight. Eight. So he's he still at that early enough. young change, young age of things. Um, Sometimes it's just a matter of watching your friends do it. So if he sees somebody else out <laughs> there running, then he might model what they're doing. Oh, he's um, always willing to run. It's just getting him to run in a specific direction. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> He'll run down an empty aisle at Walmart any time. Like, yeah, right here to the, the, the track that we use is one of the Noblesville schools, and it is fenced in. So there's no getting out if they we don't want him to get out. So we do take that into consideration. But yes, our coaches are, and our volunteers, most of them have experience with working with special needs individuals. So I think that's something that we could work with you on. We would probably start him in the skills level and keep it very simple and very basic. <laughs> well, like I said, if you put him on a track, if we could get somebody to just get him to go around a track, I think he'd run on the track all day. Yeah. We, we, a few years ago, we had a little boy who was eight and he loved to run. And all we had to do was say go. And he would just go, go, go. And he would not stop until somebody actually stopped him. He had more endurance than I, I had ever seen as a kid. So we just let him go. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you very much. This is my information. Like I said, there's brochures up here. Uh, if you want more information about uh, Special Olympics, you can go to our website. Uh, if you need help connecting with your county program, I can do that as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Well, my name is Michelle Hayden, and I'm the Inclusion Supervisor at the Monon Community Center. So just so I get a kind of an idea of who is in the room, I want to see um, what age is. So if you um, are the parent or if you support a child who would be preschool age, two to five, Raise up your hand, two to five, okay? If you support a child who is um, youth age, so six to 12, raise up your hand, okay? Super. If you support a child who is um, teen, 13, 17, all right? And then anyone who supports um, <coughs> someone who's 18 and older. Okay, awesome. Samantha, where you Great, so, um, my job as the inclusion supervisor is to do two things. To supervise the adaptive program and then also to make sure everything else is inclusive and accessible. So first I'm going to talk about the adaptive program 
and then I'm going to talk about inclusion at the Monon Community Center. So in the little packet that I gave you, this is our escape guide. So this is all the programs that are at the Monon Community Center. If you turn to page 33, that is where the adaptive program begins. So everything in green is an adaptive program, which means that it's designed for um, people with disabilities. We have preschool programs, which are for two to five year olds. So at that point, um, we are theory based, um, development based, based on what the kiddos need at that point. Um, one of the programs that Beth brought up is the Young Athletes Program, which is in our preschool and in our youth program. So I love this program. It is sponsored by Special Olympics, and we pair the kiddo up one-on-one -on -one with a volunteer or a staff person. So we start the class by doing a group. So I do a group and then they go around to different areas and they work on a sports skill. So maybe one week we're working on throwing, the next week we're working on balance, the next week we're working on kicking. So every week we're working on a skill that they can then use at Special Olympics, that they can use at their, at their school to help them um, increase their sports skills. Um, all of our classes are a one to four ratio, so one staff per four kiddo or adult. However, a lot of our classes and programs are a one to one ratio, and Young Athletes is one of those. So we have lots of volunteers. Any week I could have anywhere from one volunteer a week to 300. Just depends on the week. Um, once you get into our youth program, which is for six to 12 year olds, we're still really working on those skills. So um, our youth yoga class is our most popular for our youth. The woman who teaches that class is getting her master's in occupational therapy, and she really works on the skills and breaking it down. We really try very hard to work individually with the kiddos and also helping them in that group environment. Um, all of the staff members, we have a wide variety, so like I was just talking about that woman. A lot of my staff um, have their masters in this area, and this is like their second job. So they're a teacher, and then in the evenings they come and they play with us. For our teen program, that's for our 13 to 17 year olds, then you're finding more of the social and more of the fitness. So BACA, sponsors two of our teen programs. Um, so it is free for you, free respite. Um, we have a teen bowling night, which is awesome. We have one coming up February 19th. It's wrong in here, it's February 19th. And then they also sponsor a teen karaoke night. So really working on that social um, concept. Baca also sponsors one of our youth programs, which is the Youth Fun Night. That is also a one-to-one -one ratio. So we have four staff members there. There's 12 children, and then we have tons and tons of volunteers. Last time we had a two adult to one kiddo ratio. Um, but it was, it was wonderful, and it was lovely. Uh, during Youth Fun Night, that's also free to you. That's sponsored by BACA. Um, we go swimming, we play games in the gym, we have dinner. We um, walk around the walking track to get out all of our energy. I lead group games. We watch a movie. Super, super fun. Um, so with the teen programs, then we're getting more into fitness. We're getting more into that <coughs> social aspect. Another one of our free programs to you is our Teen Night Out. It is a great program. It's on Friday nights once a week. And you also get a parent care package. So you get to go to the movies, you get to go out to eat, um, and you get um, a $30 uh, gift card to either go to the movies, go out to eat, and you get that uh, once every two times. So like if you were coming in January, we have one tomorrow night, you get that in January, you wouldn't in February, you would get, again get it in March. Uh, so that is a great program. We go swimming, we play games, we do a craft, we really work on building those relationships uh, with their peers. 
our adult program is for 18 and up. You're going to see everything at that point. The social, the fitness, the arts and crafts. All of those classes are also goal-oriented. So we have a 5K training uh, program where we're running in a 5K in April. And we did this last year. Again, it was a one-to-one -one ratio where we ran in a 5K, in the Carmel 5K. It was so beautiful. As I was running across the finish line, I was like crying with the person that I was with because all of his friends came and they were all cheering for him. And it was just wonderful. Um, you'll see in By the Adults, I also um, lead a theater troupe. So Carmel Clay Parks and Recreation has an inclusive playback troupe, the only inclusive playback troupe in the United States. The other one is in Hong Kong. So if you want to see inclusive playback, you can only see it in Carmel, Indiana. Uh, playback is where audience members tell their stories. The troupe of actors act those stories out. Our next performance is March 18th and 19th. Um, and then a part of that performance this year, we're uh, partnering with Best Buddies, um, where uh, Best Buddies are telling their stories about how we are all one and the same. We also offer private sessions. So we offer private swim lessons, where you, um, your child is paired one-on-one -on -one with an instructor who is water safety certified, also has experience working with um, kiddos and adults with disabilities. We have leisure lessons, so if they want to play basketball one-on-one -on -one with someone, if they want to do arts and crafts with someone, um, that's the leisure lessons. And we also have private music therapy. We have a recreational therapy group for teens who are on the spectrum where we're really working on what they need and their relationships <coughs> with others through recreational therapy. Um, so that is a part of the adaptive program, that's kind of just a little overhaul. Before I go on to the inclusive piece, any questions about these programs? With my dad, you just mentioned, you tell me more about it? Sure. So, play, um, so my undergrad was in recreational therapy with a minor in theater. My life goal is to own an inclusive theater for people with disabilities. Um, right now, I'm actually like in my dream job, but that's like my next dream job. <laughs> uh, one dream job at a time. <laughs> so um, my master's is in drama therapy with a focus uh, in people with disabilities. Playback is a form of drama therapy, but it's also used as advocacy and performance, and that's what I use it for. So um, Chelsea, if you'll come up. Chelsea is my uh, sister, and she's been shadowing me this week. And she actually knows what playback is, so she's going to help me a little bit with playback. So playback is where an audience member would say something, and then the troupe of actors would act that out. It starts with little things, and then it goes into stories. So if I said right now, uh, how was your day today? Someone would say? Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, so Chelsea and I are going to play that back for you. So I'm going to, and what's your name? Be Becky. This is brilliant. Let's watch. Wow. Wow. Ding, ding, ding. Oh. Wow. Oh. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. <laughs> it's a little bit better than you give her a round of applause. She's the best in the world. <laughs> so this troupe is inclusive. It has people with and without disabilities. And I have to tell you, last night we had rehearsal and it was absolutely chilling. Um, the connections that are made, the abstract thinking, everything. It is so beautiful. Uh, for example, uh, one time an audience member said, um, going with your gut, and a man who had a disability stepped forward and just said, um, beep, beep. Beep, beep, and then everyone added on to it. So it's, it's very, very beautiful. And our next show is March 18th and 19th. Yep. Sorry. Uh, so about these, but do you have to be a member of the No. Good question. You do not have to be a member to participate in these programs. That's a separate thing. And you also, if you are a member, you don't get any kind of discount for the programs. Okay. And they're so short. I mean, it looks like they last three weeks maybe and then with the young athletes you can only sign up for one right mm -hmm. do you have any other um, so for the youth um, they are shorter so for preschool and youth they're anywhere from three to four weeks 
and then once we get two teen and adults, we're going to eight weeks, and then this will start again in the summer. But then for the peers, the typical peers, they have longer sessions mm -hmm. for stuff. Any other questions about the adaptive programs before we go on to the inclusive? Oh, yeah. Um, this private leisure, do you pick it or do you just pick several things that they will do? So you would say, my child is um, interested in X, Y, and Z. And then we would assess, and then we would pair them up with someone, and then say they started doing uh, basketball, and then they, hate, they actually didn't like it, then we would switch it to something else. But first, it's where you kind of have an idea, or we can also assess and see what's good. Okay, so if we Either just said, we just gave you some things, then they can see if they like it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so we can do um, two things. Um, you can let us know or I can also do an assessment and figure out. Any other questions about the adaptive program? Is that part of leisure lessons only um, for older kids? No, it's for anyone. We have um, kiddos as young as two right now doing leisure lessons. And we have kiddos as young as six months doing our swim lessons. Any other questions about the adaptive program? Okay, so if you oh, okay, if you have any more, we'll come back to that. So when you are participating in an adaptive program, there's um, this sheet that says 2016 information form. So anyone who's participating in an adaptive program or an inclusive program fills out one of these sheets, and we keep this on file um, for the person. And that could be for inclusion or for adaptive. Now, for inclusion at the Monon Community Center, a part of my job is to make everything inclusive. So um, if you are a member, you receive, then you get, um, you can use the gyms, you can use the fitness center, you can use um, all the group fitness classes, and you can also use Kids Zone which is um, a free um, daycare that we offer. <coughs> so if you're not a member, it's $5 per time. So I also make Kids Zone inclusive, and I will also talk about that in just a moment. So for example, if you had a kiddo, and you were turning in the book, and say you were turning to page 22, and you stumbled onto karate, which I make this inclusive for lots and lots and lots of kiddos. And you said, Michelle, my kiddo really wants to do karate, but I know that they want some kind of support and we want them to be in the youth program, not the adaptive program. Then you would fill out this other form, this ADA request for a modification. And you would say, you know, I need some kind of supports for karate class. <clears throat> then what I would do is I would meet with you and your child and I would do an assessment. Um, that the assessment assesses everything. It assesses their body, it assesses um, their mind, it assesses their social ability, it assesses everything. It is a complete assessment. Then once I take all that data, I put it in a couple other things, you don't really need to know about that, I find out what comes out, and then we um, provide those inclusive supports. So then I write a plan, and I implement the plan, and I have goals and objectives for each plan. Now also when someone comes to the Monon Community Center and say they need a sign interpreter, say they need some kind of modification to our building, I also do all of that. And then say your um, kiddo needs some kind of modification, like I was saying, to kid zone, then I would do an assessment and figure out what they need. If we need to hire another staff to be with them, we need to get a volunteer, um, if I need to make a visual schedule, um, so a part of my job is to make sure that everything is inclusive and accessible. Every single staff member who is hired at Carmel Clay Parks and Recreation goes through inclusion training. And every single person at Monon Community Center goes through inclusion training twice a year. Um, that was something that was very important to me, and so we make sure that that occurs. So the lifeguards at the pools at Monon Community Center go through the inclusion training twice a year, and as you know, some kiddos don't do very well when you blow the whistle. That doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. So I support the lifeguards in learning different signs and um, learning different methods to work with the kiddos. 
And every time we need some kind of support, I go to the lifeguards and let them know. So we all work as a team to make sure that everything is inclusive and accessible. Any questions? The difference is the membership um, is on page four. So for an adult, a, mo a membership is $40 a month. For a whole household, it's 99 So in your membership, you can use the fitness center, the group fitness classes, indoor aquatics, the water park, which is a really good deal in the summertime, um, the walking and running track, and kids zone. So that's what that includes. The classes are everything else. Just separate. Yep, completely separate. The other thing that we're doing this summer that we're very excited about is we're having um, adaptive um, open uh, water park evenings. So after the water park is closed, the water park closes at 7 p.m., then once a month we're going to have it open just for adaptive families. Because we know that it can be very hard for families to come to the water park when the concession stand is open, when the music is loud, when there's a bazillion thousands of people at the water park. So we started this last summer. It was so nice. There was like 100 people there. Everyone was happy and laughing, and it was great. So we really, really try to make sure that um, you have these opportunities. And if you ever have any ideas, always let me know, because I always want to work with them. My contact information is inside of this book, um, right in green, my phone number and my email. I send out um, parent <coughs> emails once a month or once every two months. Uh, and if you would like to get on that email list, I send out like the schedule for the month and any updates. So if there's anything like crazy going on that I think that you should know about, also that. So if you would like to get on either one of those, you can give me a call or shoot me an email. Yeah? If your child has like a half person or a rest of person mm -hmm. from mobile or something, can they come to these programs with the child? Yes, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. So first of all, say your child has a respite person. Number one, we don't charge for the respite staff. So say your respite staff is bringing them to the water park or bringing them to the indoor pool or whatever. We don't charge for that person. Um, that's the first part. And then the second part is, yes, they can come to the classes and support them, and we work with BACA. We work with the other schools, and so um, I will send a sheet to the teacher that they will fill out. A lot of times I'll go over with their behavioral therapist, their plan. So um, we're going to have free carriage rides and free cosmetology appointments beforehand um, done by um, a university close, a beauty school. So they're going to come in and do um, beauty appointments. Um, and McAllister's is providing all of the refreshments. Uh, we have a really great DJ who always comes for free. He's so wonderful. Um, and we have crafts and a photo booth, and it's really a lovely event. So that is coming up on February 13th through um, 6 to 9 p.m. And the carriage rides are from 7 to 8 p.m. So just in case they need something to do for Valentine's Day, they've got a special friend they want to do something with or a best buddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's welcome. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah? I've had some parents, and I don't know when we talked about it, about siblings. Oh, yes, thank like you. Like on rest at night. They're like, so, so, and so wants to go, but their siblings don't. Well, first, by law, um, by law, um, we're a government agency. We're not allowed to say that um, children without disabilities can't participate in our programs. We would get sued and shut down. So um, that would be really sad because I'd lose my dream job. So um, of course, siblings are always welcome to come and participate. And we actually really encourage it. Uh, it really helps with classes. We found it really helpful with yoga classes, really helpful with young athletes. We'll have the sibling come and participate. And for the respite evenings, um, you know, maybe you have two kiddos and one's out of the house and then you still have to look after the other. That's no fun. We want them to come to and, and be with everyone. So uh, children without disabilities are also welcome. Mm -hmm. Does it matter if the sibling is not in the same age range, like a youth going to a 
um, older teenager? Benefit? That's a great question. So for some programs, it does matter. So for young athletes, it doesn't matter because uh, usually the sibling is kind of like helping them through the program or like yoga possibly doesn't matter. But for some programs like Youth Fun Night or other respites, um, it does matter. They do have to be in that age range. So it, it would be like a, for a program where they'd be acting like a volunteer, then it doesn't matter. A program where they're being, where they're there um, uh, as, uh, as a participant, it does matter. Youth Fun Night, we've gone once, but it fills up rather quickly, doesn't it? It fills up so fast. It filled, this last one filled up in like an hour. It filled up really, really fast. So how that process works is, um, so we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity. So you can't like sign up for all four at once because we want to make sure everyone has the opportunity. So the next one is February 12th. So that means that um, the next one's February 12th. It's filled up. The one after that is March 15th. You can start signing up for marches on February 12th. What are you talking about? A youth fun night. <clears throat> Yes, Youth Fun Night is on the page. It is like concert tickets. It's like concert tickets. Page 34. And is there a lot of help with those? One on one. One on one. So, uh, for Teen Night Out, I don't do that registration. Oh, I understand what you're saying. Who's those that easier? Yeah, so for Teen Night Out, I don't do that registration. Um, that event is sponsored by Easter Silk Crossroads, so they do that registration, but it's the same, same thing, same registration process. So it opens the minute the one on February 12th ends. Uh, yes. Do you have a waiting list? Like, if no. No. Not for you. They did for Easter Seals. If somebody would cancel, then they would um, put a well fresh person on the list. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have a waiting list for February's event. For February's event, I have a waiting list. But you're saying so, you can't so, get on a waiting list for March's event. Correct. Okay. You can't sign up right now for March. You can call me tomorrow and be like, hey, can I be at the 25th person for you fun night? <laughs> and I can get you on that list. Any other questions? 25th offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for having me, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me.